Thomas Suchek is a walking paradox. He somehow manages to be both loved and hated at the same time. If you walked up to 10 random West Ham fans right now and asked what they think of Suchek, you're gonna get a lot of contrasting opinions. Here are some keywords you often find online when you search the word Suchek. Shit. And that is the end of this segment. So I went to Twitter. Bad idea. Why the fuck is Thomas Suchek in a West Ham starting lineup in September 2024? Suchek getting a full 90 is criminal. Yes, I still hate him. Suchek still scamming his way into the lineup. So, in this video, let's dive deep into Thomas Suchek. What is the good, the bad, and the ugly? Tell me down below in the comments your thoughts on Thomas Suchek, and also, smash a like. Let's hit 200 likes. Thank you all so much for the incredible love on the channel. We're so close to hitting 1,000 subscribers, which is mental. So if you would like to help out, show this to your nan. I'm sure that she hates Suchek too or loves him, or both. Anyways, subscribe, it means a lot, but let's get into it. James Collins, Robert Snodgrass, Pablo Zabaleta. What do all these players have in common? Well, they were all loved by West Ham fans. But why? Well, it wasn't because of their quality. In fact, they were far from the best players on the pitch. It's because they always gave it their all, and that's all we ask for as West Ham fans. That's what we always say, right? Well, Suchek completely contradicts this, and in order for us to understand why, we need to rewind back to January 2020. West Ham was in dire straits. We were struggling, flirting with relegation, and desperately needed reinforcements in midfield. David Moyes had just returned as manager to save us, and he knew exactly what we needed. A tall, lanky midfielder. Enter Thomas Suchek, a name that wasn't on anyone's radar from the Czech league. At 6'4", Suchek was the perfect Moyes type player. Many compared him to Fellaini, another Moyes favourite. I don't personally remember being overly excited with this signing at the time, but when he arrived, the impact was instant. He hit the ground running from the moment he arrived. The best part? He quickly developed a habit for scoring when it mattered most. Set pieces became our bread and butter, and Suchek was the knife that cut open the back of the net. Whether it was defensively shutting down opponents or popping up in the box at just the right time, Susek became the player we could count on. But it wasn't just about the goals and stats. Suchek's attitude was always spot on. We all remember him with that bandage on his face looking like the Terminator. And that wasn't just a one-off. He'd get battered and bruised all over the gaff, but always kept going. That kind of commitment resonated with the fans. Suchek quickly became a fan favorite. His performances were so impressive that he got a lot of attention from the press. There were even whispers of Bayern Munich being interested in him. Can you believe it? Our Czech midfielder, who came out of nowhere, was now being linked with one of the biggest clubs in the world. So yeah, his impact on the team was undeniable and when football restarted after Covid in June 2020, Suchek banged in three crucial goals that helped West Ham avoid relegation. David Moyes couldn't hide his delight when Suchek signed permanently. He said, he gives us a lot of different qualities, but most importantly, he fits the profile of the player we want to bring to the club. And boy, did he fit that profile perfectly. Suchek's performances were so outstanding that he was awarded Hammer of the Year in 2020. It seemed like we had struck gold. A midfielder who could defend, score a lot of goals, and had the work rate of three players combined. What more could we ask for? But in football, as in life, nothing stays the same forever. Just as Suchek seemed undroppable, something happened. One name, Declan Rice. Ever heard the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Well, David Moyes had other ideas. What followed was a tactical gamble that would reshape West Ham's midfield. As the summer transfer window approached, all eyes were on Declan Rice. The young midfielder was attracting interest from top clubs, and even he was vocal about his desire to score more goals. Moyes, sensing an opportunity, decided to shake things up. He shifted the team's style towards a more possession-based approach, hoping to showcase Rice's abilities and potentially increase his transfer value. But this tactical shift came at a cost, and that cost was Thomas Suchek. Previously, Suchek and Rice formed a formidable double pivot in midfield. Rice held down the fort while Suchek had the freedom to roam box to box, contributing both defensively and offensively. Now, their roles were almost reversed. Rice was pushed into a more advanced position, allowing him to showcase his attacking prowess. Meanwhile, Suchek was relegated to a deeper role, one that exposed his limitations. Suddenly, his passing range and technical ability, or lack thereof, became glaringly apparent. It's not that these limitations weren't there before, but when Suchek was banging in goals left and right, it was easy to overlook them. But with the change in tactics, his goal-scoring touch seemed to vanish overnight. 
the player who once arrived late in the box to nod home crucial goals was now struggling to complete a simple pass. West Ham's form took a nosedive, and as frustration among the fans grew, Suchek became an easy target for criticism. Fans who once sang his praises now questioned his every touch. The tactical shift under Moyes highlighted a growing problem and fans who once saw him as the solution now viewed him as part of the problem. But despite the growing criticism, there was always something peculiar about the Suchek situation. Fans were frustrated with his performances, but it never felt personal. We all knew it wasn't entirely his fault. Moyes kept playing him when it was clear it wasn't working, but Suchek still always gave it his all. It created this weird dynamic where he was both loved and hated at the same time. We couldn't stand his performances on the pitch, but we couldn't help but admire his relentless work ethic. And yeah, since then, not a lot's changed. Julian Lopetegui, our new gaffer, came in with a reputation for possession-based football. You'd think that would have been the final nail in Suchek's West Ham coffin, right? Nope, he's still in the starting lineup. It's like he's got nine lives or something. What's mad is Lopetegui mentioned he'd been keeping a close eye on West Ham before joining, so naturally you'd assume he'd have spotted that Suchek might not be the best fit for his style of play. It seemed obvious that our Czech midfielder had no place in this new look squad. Most of us fans were ready to bid him farewell, appreciating everything he'd done for the club. This unexpected turn of events has only added fuel to the fire of the Suchek debate among West Ham fans. And what's even madder is the fact he got a contract extension until 2027. He said, I feel that the fans appreciate me here. Well, I am sorry to break it to you, mate, but not everyone does appreciate you and a lot want a West Ham without Thomas Suchek. And to me, that is quite sad, really. His performance against Crystal Palace was a prime example of what he can still bring to the team, scoring the opening goal in a 2-0 victory. Even in the Aston Villa game, where he was pushed into a more attacking role, he was involved in creating chances, it's clear he's working hard to adapt to Lopetegui's system. But let's be real, not everyone's convinced. For every fan praising Suchek's work rate, there's another questioning his technical ability. It's creating a real divide in the fan base. Some see him as a loyal servant of the club, willing to adapt and give his all. Others view him as a square peg in a round hole, a relic of the Moyes era that needs to be moved on. This split opinion isn't just about Suchek. It reflects broader questions about West Ham's identity and future. Are we sticking with the physical, direct style that served us well in the past? Or are we fully committing to Lopetegui's possession-based approach? A lot of questions are being asked, and to get a better sense of it all, let's look at what some of West Ham's YouTube fan channels are saying. Let's start with Gio from Hammers Chat. He's not pulling any punches when it comes to Suchek. Gio argues that Suchek's lack of technical ability and passing range is holding the team back. He believes Suchek's limitations are hindering West Ham's ability to create chances and maintain control in midfield. But it's not all doom and gloom. Gonzo, also from Hammers Chat, offers a more balanced view. He acknowledges Suchek's work rate and contributions, but questions whether he fits into the current tactical setup. Jay from E20Zone offers a tactical take on the debate, arguing that Suchek isn't suited to playing higher up the pitch. Without giving too much away, Jay believes Suchek should operate primarily as a defensive midfielder, with the freedom to push forward and make those late, crucial runs into the box. I highly recommend you check out his video. Then we've got Russ from West Ham Network and he's not mincing his words. In a recent rant, Russ expressed frustration with the ongoing criticism of Suchek. He argues that while Suchek might not be the most technically gifted player, his work ethic and contributions to the team shouldn't be overlooked. This divide in opinion isn't just about Suchek, it reflects broader issues at West Ham. The team's evolving playing style under new management has left some players struggling to adapt. Fans are torn between appreciating Suchek's past contributions and feeling frustrated with his current performances. The Suchek situation reflects a bigger picture at West Ham. As the team transitions to a more possession-based style, it's struggling to balance the old and the new. Suchek has become a symbol of this transition, a player who embodied the club's previous identity, but is now struggling to find his place in its future. And so, my friends, we find ourselves tangled in the Suchek paradox, seemingly unsolvable, yet begging for an answer. I believe I've found it, and I have a feeling this could be the spark that ignites his redemption arc. Now hear me out. I believe there's a place for him in this team, and to me, it's glaringly obvious. He doesn't need to change who he is. He'll never be a technically gifted player. So, how does he fit in? Simple. Super sub, Suchek. Suchek's skill set is perfect for him to come off the bench. Need a goal in the dying minutes? Throw Suchek on and start pumping crosses into the box. Clinging to a lead and need to shore up the midfield? 
Suchek's work rate and defensive prowess could be just what we need to see out the game. It's literally as if he is suited for that. But beyond all that, let's stop with the Suchek hate. He's a genuinely good person, and while that doesn't excuse poor performances, we've got to remember he's just doing what the manager asks of him. And that in itself is something to admire. And it's not only about football. Suchek's been doing amazing work in the community that often flies under the radar. He's the patron of the EASI Cup, a tournament raising awareness for mental health. That's the kind of off-field impact that builds a lasting legacy at a club. Look, I get it. When things aren't going well, it's easy to point fingers. But maybe we need to take a step back and appreciate what Suchek brings to the table. His work ethic is second to none, and he's always ready to put his body on the line for the team. That's the kind of attitude that can inspire a whole squad. This isn't just about one player. It's about how we view loyalty, adaptation, and the support we give our players. As fans, we're quick to write someone off when they don't fit the latest tactical system. But football's a funny game. Sometimes the players you least expect end up becoming your most valuable assets. And my hunch is that he will prove to be a very valuable asset this season. So yeah, making this video was kind of a trip for me. It really got me thinking about Suchek in a different light. And honestly, I appreciate him a bit more now. Hopefully it did the same for you. From being a fan favorite to a pretty divisive figure, he's been through it all. But despite all the tactical shifts and criticism, Suchek's still out there, fighting to prove himself. With Lopetegui in charge, we've seen flashes of the old Suchek, the one who couldn't stop scoring. He's trying to adapt to a possession-based system, even if it doesn't come naturally to him. But here's the real question. Is Suchek part of West Ham's problem, or could he still be part of the solution? I'd love to know what you think about it all, so drop your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more. Don't forget to check out our video on Todibo's inspiring journey to the Premier League. Trust me, it's literally like something out of a movie script.